This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Y'all, y'all, y- this just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Looking yeah. good and happy New Year, Stephanie Jones. Yeah. Happy 2023, yeah. people. Yeah. Feeling good, Steph? <laughs> yeah. Did you do anything exotic for 2023 kickoff? Not yet. It was still quite early in 2023, but I literally got back to America last night at like 4 a.m. or something crazy. So the answer is yes, she did. If you just got back. In the <laughs> I just got back. I threw out the exotic and everyone kind of looked at me, but I was going to do my Christopher Walken member from when he's like, oh, where'd you go, Frank? So yeah. exotic. <laughs> but then I pulled back and but then everyone looked at me like I was a weirdo. So I'm kind of back to that moment. Hey, I'm with Steph, we never know where exactly. that that's what I'm saying. Be. That's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. I don't know why I explain what's in my head. All right, we're getting our first look at Jeremy Renner. After a snow plowing accident on Monday, we talked about this. The actor posted this photo from his hospital bed, writing, thank you all for your kind words. Too messed up now to type, but I send love to you all. We're also learning what exactly happened. Authorities say Jeremy was helping a family member get a car out of the snow. He jumped out of the 14,000 pound plow, but the machine started to roll. Jeremy tried to jump back into the plow, and that's when the accident happened. Mm. I mean, it's a big machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see him. It is though. good to see you know, him. That yes. is a positive sign. So I, we're obviously thinking about him and his family and praying for them. So this is it's a true story, very sad. And like, I hope my family don't mind me saying this, but a family member that had dementia, actually something like this very similar happened to them. And they, they had dementia and they went out in the night and there was a piece of equipment very similar to that. And they didn't, obviously they've got dementia. They're, they're not quite aware of their surroundings, what's happened. And they actually, might, they were run over and they killed. They mm. would they died from the same story as that. So please, if you do have any equipment like that at home, if you have any elderly members of the family that have got Alzheimer's, they've got dementia, please ensure that those items are really locked up and kept away or keep an eye on your family members because speaking from experience, that's real and it happens. And sadly, we got told, you know, when when he passed that um, it wasn't the only ice it wasn't an isolated incident it can easily happen so please 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 keep it's, all heavy machinery locked yeah. up and very hard to access yeah without all that accidents happen by itself right mm-hmm. so Especially i'm glad. in the winter time exactly so that, exactly that's yes. what i thought about. i know we got to move on but no no this this year you know i, I go crazy with my lights and try and be an old man with it and like to put my lights up but i'm not that good at it and i was messing around in the front and my foot slipped and I caught myself. But Erica, I swear, I looked back and I, the, I would have fallen straight back on a ladder that was laying on the ground and I would have definitely cracked my head. I live by myself. And mm. that's the kind of thing that, yeah. you know, people fall uh, yeah. hanging lights and people slip. Yeah. And it, it's, you sound like such an older person, but I am. And I've seen all this kind of stuff happen. It's happened to me. So please be careful mm-hmm. in the wintertime. It seems like you're more susceptible to making those because everything's slippery and cold. Yeah. And that's right. That's right. Well, we're glad he's doing better. Yes. At least showing signs of it. So TJ Holmes and Amy Robach remain uh, off the air on Good Morning America, but they don't seem to be very worried about it. So check this out. The couple was recently photographed kissing while on vacation in Miami. Meanwhile, attorneys for TJ's wife of 12 years issued a statement to the Daily Mail calling out TJ's lack of discretion, respect, and sensitivity. We're also learning that TJ's wife considered Amy part of her female village, even giving her a shout out last year for her love and support of her daughter. Mm, mm, mm. Give it to us, Eve. <laughs> Give it to say, us. That noise means it's coming. I mean, first, they, TJ and his former wife, or estranged wife, I believe her name is Marley, um, they have a nine year old daughter. Uh, so basically, what that statement said to me was hey, why don't you show some respect for the union that we once had and the fact that your daughter is learning about all of these things in real time as you're out gallivanting with your former co-host slash lover. Um, All of this doesn't have to be so public. And I think that this is also a situation where she's probably thinking, what did I do to deserve this? It's one thing to completely sever a relationship. It's something different to like drag things out in public and do it that way. So, you know, and then the idea of, I I just had this conversation last weekend. Like, I don't talk about intimate details about me and my husband. And a a big part of that isn't because I don't necessarily trust my friends or circle. 
well, not everybody needs to be trusted, um, but <laughs> I'm just being honest. It's true, yeah. <laughs> you learn the hard way sometimes, but a lot of times it's about the idea of like, I'm not gonna advertise to other people what makes me feel like this is a great partner for right. me. Because people, you just don't know. Sometimes it is that advertisement of like, oh, well, her life seems to be X, Y, and Z. Maybe if I could just replace her, that would be my life too. So. I'm not down with this. No details for E. Al, how's your sex life? Uh, it's it, look. Let's get into it. Jeff. I've been all day. You know, honestly, I, I I keep going back and forth on this story, Steph. I wish I, I don't think they're handling it well, but at the same time, I do think, especially as we begin to get older. You gotta live your life at some point. They were already separated, uh, TJ and his wife, when this situation started happening. Well, I'm, we don't know that. Yeah. I, we I, don't know that. Okay, uh, that's what I thought yeah, I read. Yeah, we don't but know that. It, it, it didn't, she didn't seem that shocked. I will say that. To me, she did not seem that shocked that this ha happened. I'm not saying they should be out parading, but they were at the end of a pier by themselves. They weren't, they're not like at the Met Gala together. I do think sometimes you find the right partner in the wrong situation. I'm not saying they handled this correctly, but I'm saying life is not a movie. And sometimes when you find a partner, they look happy together. I'm not saying that that will last. I'm not saying that's what I would do. I'm just saying I could see it, dog. So I, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I want to make a solid stay in here because I don't want to be wishy-washy. I'm, I'm just saying that life is a lot more complicated than we ever give it credit for, and it's not always as pretty as we'd Steph, like. Steph, can be. I put out a scenario for you and see, see if you like it? Yeah. Here's what I think's happening. I don't think they're coming back to Good Morning America. No, I don't think so. We, right? I think they probably had that green lit in paper, and that's why they're probably going for a bit more. Right, and I think some other network or some other entity are starting their own show with the, these two. You that, really think that's that? what I think, Ooh. and I think the publicity is on purpose now to get eyeballs back on them. Ooh. What do you think about that scenario? I mean, possibly, but I, I like I hear both Al and Erica. I just feel like if that if I had a nine-year-old daughter that, as Erica said, was was learning all this information in real time, they're at school, they're very young, they're very impressionable. That's a lot for your child. That is a lot for them, and I would like to hope they have more respect for their child than that. I also hear what I was saying. They, it did look remote. It did look like a paparazzi photo they're not in LA they're not in New York they've gone off by themselves and sadly they've been like snapped I don't know I just I don't know if they're gonna get another TV gig right. I think that will be for a while unless you know something I don't but I think for sure they've had the confirmation hey you're not coming back and that's why they're yeah. off doing whatever they're doing I, don't I have a prediction on that all right let's I hear think it. they're gonna keep Amy and TJ is gonna go Wow that's bold you'd think what's what one of them is going to get, both of them are going to get. I, I think that the situation, I, I Why would believe, you say that? I just have a feeling that she's going to get protected and he will get let go. I don't think so. Well, um, well so he. That'd be, it's, it, I'm it, just it also predicting. Was alleged that there were some indiscretions. That there were, so maybe that. Yeah, was, there were some uh, things that through that. And also, they've made a big investment in Amy. So, I, would they leave I her know. out there? flailing like this for that long if they made that big of an investment. No, I think they, they have to make a statement, you know, yeah. they say they're supporting the families, they didn't know this relationship was going on, apparently, who knows, right. but I think they have to, as a network, make that statement, right. for sure. Eric, but it doesn't mean they're not coming back. Eric's got some predictions Jeff, you for 2023. Big one there too. Well, I don't know if it's going to be a network, but I think they're going to do something together, mm -hmm. and that's why I think these photos are out there. Who took that photo? They want it out there for a reason. Again, I don't I'm know throwing that, out some I don't know if I agree too. with that. That looked yeah. a bit candid to You don't me. have to shut it down like that. You can just <laughs> no, say no. that was candid. That's not, that's not J-Lo and Ben Affleck on the boat. Do, um, you know, you can imagine what that movement was. Don't no. even get me started on J-Lo yes, and Ben. Yes, please. I'm over it. All right. That was so 2022. It's a movie that bo uh, won both Oscars and Golden Globes, but the stars of the 1968 Romeo and Juliet say one scene went too far. So Olivia Hussey and Leonard Witt did I get that right? We're just 15 and 16 years old when they played the iconic characters. Both are now in their 70s and are suing Paramount Pictures for more than $500 million over a nude seat in the film. They say the director lied to them, telling them they could wear flesh-colored suits in the bedroom scene, but changed his mind, saying they must act in the nude or their picture would fail and their careers would be hurt. I got a lot to say, but let's that hear from you. Jeff. Oh. No, go on. Yeah. Go ahead, 
it, Jeff. No, I just, yeah. I, I don't think you could sue for $500 million for something that happened 70 years ago, okay? If it affected your life that much, you wouldn't have got on that stage and took those Oscars no, or those no. Golden Globes no, and you no, would have no, sued no, no, back no. then. That's not yes, fair. Yes, yes, yes. That's you not fair. Listen, there's something called the sign of the times. And when you're 70 years ago putting things in today's society, you can't do that. It's not going to fit. That block doesn't fit in a circle hole. No, I'm I think, sorry. I think because today people understand they're more open, they, they're more aware of like pointing out things that have happened that are clearly really wrong. Of course, I but really, you can't I go feel, back in history and make it right today. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. What do you guys think? I feel like they're, think back to being 15 and 16 and being pressurized in that situation where you're already in the middle of filming a movie that you will probably make your career. You're going to have pressure, so much pressure from agents or managers at that time. And at 15, I wouldn't have been confident enough to say no at that point. I'm not doing this. Well, no and one maybe when they get sense. older, when they get older, now maybe because of the movements, because of things changing, they feel like they can. So 70 I feel like. Year? Yeah. Okay, go well, ahead. I $500 like million dollars is a statement judgment. It's not a real thing. When you ask for the, the court for that much, it's because it's prefaced with the idea that you're making a change in society. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with actually getting $500 million. It's about protecting those who need to be protected in this moment. Well, and I, I would like us not to be talking so much about the monetarily as a society, but hopefully in a few years we're talking about policies that were enacted mm -hmm. because of these things, because these things were happening as recently as 10 years ago. You know, we've heard about the things but that were happening on, on yeah. movie sets. And it's, Jeff, it's when it's 70 years ago. There was oh, things not, that not, you could slap a woman in public. 70 years yeah, ago I, and I, yeah, I'm not that was that. a sign of the I'm, times I'm just talking but about then 70 I'm years later you're going to sue who for that you right, know what I'm no. saying? Like, there was things that happened that were egregious and disgusting and things that happened, but you're going to come back now and sue people for $500 million right. 70 years later? Right. I'm less monetary and more policy. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I th oh, yeah. All right. Coming up, I can wrap it up. I got it. <laughs> Our interview with Joan London. She's telling us all about her friendship with the late Barbara Walters. And does Angelina Jolie have a new man? Tori's breaking it down in her segment, Um, Actually. It's a new year and DBL is all the talk. <laughs> Let's get it going. We had a lot to talk about last year. I'm flexing every day. And we're not stopping in 2023. <laughs> I'll see you guys <laughs> on a flip side. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris, you, you would know, who's the director that got into, he directed X-Men, he got into some trouble. Oh, yeah. This is his last name, Price something, am I making that? No, I don't think that's his name. Oh, I just watched something about <laughs> him. But there was, there's been, yes. a, there's been, there's documentaries out about this person and it, it, I, it, you know, when we talk about this issue, I think the bigger issue is wherever there's a situation where there are any age kids, but especially teenage 11 to 15, 11 to 17, and they're a collective, whether they're actors or they're in the de uh, detention facility, whatever it is, there should be extra scrutiny about the adults looking over them. Of because course. every yeah. single story, yes, it, it is, of course, Erica, but it never is. No, I and understand. And I don't understand yeah. that. Like, how does this, we saw that happen at Penn State, where yeah. those kids were left vulnerable. We saw that with our Olympians at Michigan State. We saw that with the Ohio State wrestling team. We, we saw that with our, like, there's always these, it's always a, where, where Paris Hilton went, went to her uh, detention facility, yeah. in, which have been heavily scrutinized. We all, th there's a pattern here, but it's like we're not, we're choosing not to notice that anytime there's a group of young kids that are contained in an area, the adults tasked to take care of them are not vetted at all. There's shady stuff going on and nothing happens for years. That Penn State stuff was going on for decades. Yeah. And everybody just like, but Ab, do you think this is the only story coming out of Hollywood 55 years ago? Let no. me make that correction. They're in their 70s, mm -hmm. and it was 55 years ago. Still, 55 years ago was a totally different time. Yeah. You don't think there were stories of those producers, whoever on there, having sex with those young actresses yes. and of things course. like that? Yeah. yeah, but so those are the people at fault. Not Paramount Studios, who has all the money. Yeah, they hired those people back in the day, right. but you can't retroactively right. make people in today's society pay for what one dirtbag did yeah. 55 I would years argue ago. That
Welcome back. Happy 2023, everyone. With the new year comes new relationships. But one thing that isn't new, gossip sites giving us all the juicy deets on these Hollywood couples. But I'm um, actually, are they even true? Okay, okay, okay. So two of the newest potential couples include Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. No, Brangelina is not getting back together, but the exes have both been spotted with much younger booze. Brad seems to be in an exclusive relationship with his 29-year-old girlfriend, Inez de Ramon. The lovebirds just spent New Year's Eve on a romantic trip to Mexico. And Angelina, she was seen on a coffee date in London with 26-year-old actor Paul Mescal after she attended a play he was in. But Angelina's 16-year-old daughter was also there, so maybe there were just a couple of actors enjoying a latte? Um, actually, no, it looks like 2023 might have brought Cupid's arrows to these divorcees. Love's in the air. Here's something that's not new in 2023, Leo dating a new girl who is, yes, younger than 25. Leonardo DiCaprio and 23-year-old Victoria Lamas were spotted ringing in 2023 together in St. Bart's. Now, according to inside sources, this is the fourth time they have hung out in a month. Sounds pretty serious if you ask me. Now, you know Victoria's actor dad, Lorenzo Lamas. He even told the Post she is smitten with him. Gee, wasn't Leo just with Gigi, the supermodel? Um, actually, it seems like that relationship may have been left behind in 2022, or because she's 27. <laughs> it's ancient. That's all for this week. We'll be right back. This trending post on Reddit shares a photo of a recent receipt from Cuba Libre, a restaurant near DC's Penn Quarter neighborhood, questioning that 3% surcharge tacked onto the check. So let's verify, are DC restaurants allowed to add surcharges to your bill? We looked at several sources to find out and talked to a spokesperson from the restaurant who explained what they're doing isn't uncommon. COVID-19, inflation, fuel costs. Many factors driving their prices up could mean restaurants and other businesses pass the cost along to customers. The Better Business Bureau says those surcharges and so-called hidden fees can be annoying. They are generally legal. A spokesperson for the Federal Trade Commission tells Verify their biggest concern is when consumers have no notice about and are given no explanation for fees. A spokesperson for D.C.'s Office of the Attorney General wouldn't comment on this particular restaurant, but did tell us, quote, businesses that charge undisclosed or misleading fees may be in violation of the district's consumer protection laws. This includes situations where a restaurant does not prominently disclose a fee before the customer orders or where it fails to accurately describe the purpose of the fee. In the case of Cuba Libre, the restaurant spokesperson shared these images showing the ways in which patrons are given a heads up about their surcharges, telling us the 3% up charge helps them make money despite the rising cost of doing business. We aren't the authority to decide if Cuba Libre's fees are in the clear, but the AG's office says anyone with questions should contact their consumer protection hotline. But we can still verify restaurants in D.C. and elsewhere are generally allowed to add surcharges to your bill as long as they're upfront about it. If you think that's not the case, you're encouraged to report it. With your Verify, I'm Abby Lorico. Welcome back to DBL. Barbara Walters was a legend and an icon. Earlier, we spoke to her good friend, award-winning journalist Joan London, to share some memories about Barbara, who passed away last week. Have a look. Joan, we appreciate you so much being here today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. It's always nice to have a chance to reminisce about Barbara because she was unique and special, one of a kind. One of a kind is right. Uh, Joan, yeah. we are so sorry for your loss and for everyone's loss here. You met Barbara yeah. though, for the first time when you hosted GMA. Can you just give us, what was she like? I hear she's very funny. And any advice that she passed on to you? Well, the very first time I met Barbara, um, and I had been producing and uh, anchoring a new news show in Sacramento, California, and part of my job was to watch the Today Show every single morning because I could use stories out of the Today Show since it was an NBC affiliate. So I'd been watching her every single morning for like a year and a half. And she was scheduled to come on and talk about one of her primetime specials. 
And I got the interview. I was so nervous. I can't even begin to tell you. <laughs> I'd be so scared. So intimidated. And I don't remember who the celebrities were in that primetime special. But she took me aside after the commercial and said, I just need to talk to you. <sighs> she said, do not fight for equality around here. You're not, it, the time has not come, not just for this industry, but for the society. And you're gonna hear from women all the time. Why don't you get to start the show? Why don't you get to end the show? Cause I had, was under the same rules that she had been under with Frank McGee at the Today Show. You can't start the show, end the show. You have to wait for two questions before you can talk. Jeez. And she said, but it's an amazing position to be in. You just take every small assignment that they'll give you and make every one of those shine, make them memorable. Oh. And that will make you, you know, that, that's, what, that's why your star will rise. She said, and one other thing, write thank you notes. She said, people always wonder, how do I get the stars when the movie's open? Well, partly it's because when I see in Variety that some star has been cast in a movie or is gonna be coming in for a Broadway show, I write them immediately. Huh. I write them a handwritten note that says, oh my gosh, this is such a perfect casting. I hope the production goes well. This is going to be great. I can't wait to see it and when it's finished. So when the movie comes out, who do you think they call? Yeah. Like she had gone the extra mile. I think some of that has lost over the yes. years. I don't know why or how. And yeah. Joan, I want to compliment how great you look. You look fantastic. I, know. I don't know if you're allowed to say that Thank anymore, you. but <laughs> speaking of sexism, it yeah. gets into my next question. Hey Barbara dealt with sexism earlier in her career. How did that affect her? You kind of touched on it a little bit. I mean, nobody suffered from sexism, ageism like Barbara did. I mean, they just, she battled for every little step up the way at the Today Show until finally being able to be a co-host. And even then, like I say, she couldn't open the show, end the show, or she had to wait for questions to be asked before she was allowed to speak. And then when she made that jump to ABC, she could have passed that up. I mean, mm. it was to become historically the first woman ever to anchor the evening news. But, but to say it was unpopular among the rest of the industry, which was pretty much 98% male, all the producers, all the other, I mean, there's a story that Sam Donaldson ran through the, he was an ABC reporter, ran through the halls of ABC News yelling, the women are coming, the women are coming. <laughs> wow, wow. And I mean, That's the, and I know somebody who rode up in the elevator with Barbara and Harry Reasoner. They said he couldn't have gotten farther away, wouldn't look at her, wouldn't yes. turn, wouldn't answer her, didn't speak to her. I mean, it was, you know, I just wondered how she could, like, just preserve her own self-respect and her own self-confidence to be able to sit there. But that's what she could do. Wow. Uh, really quickly, we have about 20 seconds. What would you say her legacy is? Oh, my gosh. Raising the bar of the industry, making every news journalist out there better mm. at their job, and certainly laying down the path for every other female that has come you know, along to be able to, like a person like me, to be able to get that job at Good Morning America. Beautifully said. Yeah. You too, though, Joan. Yeah. We wouldn't be, us females would not be sitting here. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be here for, without you. Absolutely. So true. we thank you uh, and also for taking the time today to share those very special memories about Barbara with us. We appreciate you. We'll be right back. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Joan. Let's verify. Can you use an at-home COVID-19 test after the expiration date on the box? Our sources are the FDA and the manufacturers of some of the most popular at-home antigen tests. Abbott's Binax Now, iHealth's Rapid Test, Quidel's Quick View, and Intrivo's On Go. You'll find the expiration date clearly printed on the packaging. An FDA spokesperson explains to us certain components and tests may degrade over time, which could mean they don't work as well. Product websites and instruction sheets will all tell you not to use the test after its expiration date. But here's the thing, depending on the test, that expiration date might not be the date on the package. Quote, since stability testing necessarily takes time, the FDA works with manufacturers to extend the expiration dates of their COVID-19 tests as additional support of stability data becomes available, the FDA spokesperson said in an email. So some tests hit stores with a shelf life of, say, eight months. If a company can prove to the FDA that it's reliable for longer, 
perhaps for 12 months, that shelf life can be extended. And that's what happened with eye health and on-go tests. To find out how long it's really usable, use the lot number to look up the corresponding new expiration date online. A spokesperson for Abbott tells us the expiration date printed on Binax Now tests still applies. Despite the product's shelf life extension, the earlier manufactured tests had components with varying use-by dates, and you'll want to make sure the whole kit is still effective. The quick view test also got an FDA authorized shelf life extension, but you'll still want to stick to the printed expiration date on those boxes and don't use the test afterwards. So we can verify you can use some at home COVID-19 tests after their printed expiration dates, but you'll need to confirm the shelf life has in fact been extended. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. It feels like every week we are hearing about a new data breach. One Verify viewer says they were recently notified that their personal data was compromised and soon after, they noticed a decrease in their credit score. They reached out to us to ask if their credit score can drop just because they were part of a data breach. So let's verify. Our sources are credit scoring companies FICO and Vantage Score, the Consumer Data Industry Association, and the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. Credit scores are meant to predict how likely you are to repay a loan. Both FICO and Vantage Score say they use your payment history, amount owed, the length of your credit history, recent credit applications, and the types of credit you currently have to calculate your score. Whether you've been a victim of a data breach is not considered. So, no, your credit score won't drop just because you were part of a data breach. However, if you do notice a drop of more than a few points in your credit score after a breach, that could indicate that someone opened a new line of credit in your name. Our sources recommend regularly monitoring your credit report for unfamiliar activity. If you notice something suspicious, then contact the lender and the credit reporting agency to request an investigation. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Why not kick off the new year with a relaxing experience at home? We're talking about it in today's tips sponsored by Jacuzzi. So here's how you can make your bathroom more zen, reduce stress and calm your mind. Display art of serene landscapes and beautiful photos of nature. It helps your mind escape to somewhere special. Next, natural light can brighten up a bathroom and if you add some plants, you can literally breathe life into your space. Whatever, whatever the reason may be, Jacuzzi can finally bring your idea, ideal bathroom to life. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched stress-free remodeling process. Visit jacuzziremodel.com or call 800-523-1523. Yeah. <laughs> it said we'll be right back. And I'm like, no, we're not going to be right back. We have 10 seconds to the yeah, show ends. I just, I got a lot of plan ideas. I think I might, plans are going in the bathroom. I'm going to give I want it to look like a little jungle in Thanks there. Thanks for okay. filling that hole. I will yeah. see you tomorrow. <laughs>